England were unbackable favourites going into this match and justifiably so given that they'd never been beaten in 24 previous encounters with the Azzurri. Italy have found wins hard to come by in recent seasons but the manner of their performances against Wales and Ireland in their two previous matches gave coach Conor O'Shea cause for some optimism. Despite defeat in their last game against Wales, England still had hopes of winning the championship. And Eddie Jones' men didn't take long to get over for the first try of the afternoon. In the eighth minute, the English mall rolled in unstoppable fashion towards the Italian line. Jamie George was the man to dot down for the first try of the game. The English forward sending out a powerful message early on, and when Farrell converted, it was seven points to no score. It was a setback for Conor O'Shea's men, but they responded very well. Just a few minutes later, Tommy Allen scored with a great individual effort, evading tacklers and forcing his way past Ben Youngs for a marvellous try. It was very well played by the Benetton out half. When he converted his own score, it was back to seven points apiece. But that was about as good as it got for Italy in the first half. Within moments, England were back in front. Elliot Daly did really well to get past a couple of defenders before feeding Johnny May, and the lesser winger was away for his fifth try of this season's Guinness Six Nations. Great pace from May, lovely score, and ominous for the Azzurri. Again, Farrell converted, and it was 14 points to seven. Midway through the half, it was try number three for the home side. Sheer power from Manu Tuolangi, who got past Esposito and Campagnaro before driving for the line from 40 metres out. Italy struggling to cope with the sheer strength and power of the English 15. A fine score from Tuolangi. Once more, Farrell added the extra two points to give the men in white a 21 points to seven lead. They were coasting. After Farrell added the penalty for 24 points to 7, England sealed the four-try bonus in the 32nd minute, with Tommaso Castello receiving treatment at the other end of the pitch. Tuolangi skipped past Allen before passing to Brad Shields. The New Zealand-born flanker away for the bonus point try. Shields' first score for his adopted country, and the Italians with no answer. Farrell converted for 31-7, and that's how it stayed till half-time, despite a late rally from the Italians just before the break. England picked up in the second half, where they had left off in the first. Italy in defensive mode, trying to withstand the English onslaught. An audacious pass from hooker Jamie George found Tuolangi on the wing, and the big number 13 was over for his second, England's fifth try of the game. It was an excellent score. And although Farrell missed the conversion for the first time in the game, England were 36 points to seven ahead. Although England were comfortably in front, the Italians didn't throw in the towel and they were rewarded with a second score in the 54th minute. Allen produced an accurate pass out wide to Luca Morisi and the Benetton centre was over for the try. Allen added an excellent conversion to leave it 36-14. But it didn't take long before the English juggernaut was back in gear at the other end. George Cruz did very well to make the block as the Italians tried to kick clear, and the big Saracen second row got the touchdown for try number six for England. A frustrating score for the Italians to concede, but Cruz deserves huge credit for having the energy and the desire to make the block and score the try. When it was converted, it made it 43 points to 14. And the scoring wasn't over there. With 13 minutes remaining, Guinness man of the match, Joe Cocconasinga, raced down the wing and timed his pass inside to sub Dan Robson to perfection. And the Wasps scrum half was away for the try. It was a nice moment for Robson, earning only his second cap. Lovely hitch kick from the bat winger in the build-up to the score. Robson took the acclaim. George Ford converted to clock up 50 points. 
The scoring was wrapped up two minutes from time when another block from Tobaldi's kick by Cruz allowed Shields over for his second try of the game. It was another poor five-pointer to concede from the Italians' perspective, but for Shields and England, it capped off a very successful afternoon. Eight tries scored, 57 points, their biggest win over Italy in eight years, some really promising performances, and a home match against Scotland to come for England. Italy round off their campaign at home to France, and Conor O'Shea will be looking for one big performance from his men as they seek to end their losing run in the Guinness Six Nations. At Twickenham, it finished England 57, Italy 14.